where this is headed is the infiltration of the military industrial complex and the infiltration of the UFO community at large, globally. Not just you guys. This is where I'm heading with this. I'm, ma I'm mapping it out for you. We need more people talking about the true history of what's taken place. Because then you guys will have a much better handle on what's going on around you and who you're dealing with and who you're seeing in the skies and who you're interacting with when they come into your bedroom at night. Maria Orsic. I mean, Hollywood actresses would kill for those looks, right? How about that? It's just natural beauty. Unbelievable stuff. Yeah? Maria Orsic was the leader of the Vrilleran. Did I say that correct? Vrilleranen. The Vrilleranen. They were a group of beautiful young ladies with the Vril Gisselhoft. Other members of that society. Familiar image? Yeah? From Switzerland? Yeah? Okay, now, now we're going to go deeper into it, okay? If we're not already deep in it. Next level. I want you to feel the energy of this Nordic being, yeah? Because I'm not a racist, by the way. There's good Nordics out there. Yeah? I, I have a Nordic incarnation myself in the Pleiades. I am a Nordic. Okay? In another star system, in another dimension. To grasp what is happening behind the scenes in the military industrial complex and the secret space program, one needs to be aware that there is a long standing feud between the Draco reptilian purists and a group of Nordic ET ID races, extraterrestrial interdimensional races. This feud runs deep. It is ancient and is the source of much pain in our galaxy and our world. Hands up who's aware of that feud. Quite a few people, fantastic. Who knows the origin of that feud? What it's about? Okay. <clears throat> it has to do with our galaxy being a fractal of the grand cosmic arena, the multi-dimensional grand cosmic arena. Our galaxy is known as the galactic womb. Every star in our galaxy is actually another galaxy expressing itself condensed down to the expression of a star. That's why this reality is so dense. That's why this galaxy is so dense. It's not because we're at the bottom of the universe. That's a lie. We're in what's known as the galactic womb. You need to understand there's cosmopolitical agendas at play here. Yeah? So, the beings that inhabited Alpha Draconis, which is the multidimensional draconian energy, the dragon energy, the Draco energy, expressing itself in our galaxy in a very condensed and a very intense way. Because the incarnational constructs in our galaxy are different to every other construct out there. They're a very, very intense expression genetically and both through consciousness and through spirit and through the ego uh, constructs, the, the personality interfaces that one requires for each reality. So if you're a Pleiadian, you have a particular type of ego construct, an, an ego uh, personality interface for that reality, for that vibrational field of reality, because your consciousness needs to go through a personality interface in order to relate to others and to relate to that reality. Consciousness has incarnational constructs. 
for any given reality. It's not just egos that exist on earth. Come on, people. Gods have egos. Otherwise, they wouldn't solicit worship, right? They have big ego issues. <laughs> right? <laughs> Feeding off the worship of planetary populations and more galactic populations. Some of them. Yeah? So, what happened was... <clears throat> The, a group of Dracos went around marauding all the best genetics they could find in the galaxy and created the most advanced form of being that they could create. Meaning, they, you know, to do with like what they perceived as an elevated level of consciousness, awareness and closeness to the creator. They wanted to create that, manufacture that. So they created a genetic vessel. And because there were Nordics already existing, they found that expression, that vessel, that genetic container, however you want to put it, using some of their terminology, the most attractive. And because they're used to the dark versus the light uh, dialectic, they thought the light hair also is a representation of more spiritual um, evolution. Spiritual superiority, in other words. So what they did was they, they started creating all these Nordic type of humanoid vessels and then they started incarnating into them. And these particular types of Nordics were very, very powerful because, like I said, they marauded all the best genetics they could from many different kinds of races throughout the galactic arena. Now, the purists because the reptilians are a branch off from the draconians. The draconians came first in the evolution, in chronological evolution, yeah? The reptilians are a branch after the draconians. The purists got really, really jealous and they were actually, it was abhorrent to them that that would happen. So I'm gonna share a few more slides because you, you're used to this image. I'm sure you've seen this image before, right? Many of you. Yep, there's a lot of image, imagery, sculptures from the ancient world showing us the types of draconian entities that our ancestors had to actually deal with and were confronted with. This one is obviously an animation, but it gives you an idea of, um, I've got to say, the most feared uh, warrior group in the entire galaxy is, is the Silver Legion from Alpha Draconis. When it comes to uh, warrior capabilities, you can't beat them. They are the ultimate warriors. Like here on our planet, we have some warriors that are just physically dominant over every other, war every other species on the planet. I think the New Zealand Maori are a good example of that. Right? Yeah. Right? You've got to give credit where credit's due. Those guys are amazing. And, and because they're a warrior caste and they're very tribal in their nature, they have a specific code of ethics and protocol and behaviour. They're very, they're incredibly tribal. The, the honour in these beings is very high. The, the, the point I'm trying to make here is we've got to be careful not to be racist here because there are draconians and there are reptilians who love humans love Mother Earth, who are supporting us in what we're doing here. There are those who are absolutely not. They can't stand us. They hate us. They see us as chattel. They feed off us. They, they'd rather just see us totally gone, except for the ones that enjoy feeding off us. We're very precious to them. Yeah? But we can't be racist. Just like I'm not racist about the Nordics. But you can't expect this beautiful looking Nordic being to turn up in your bedroom with all this light glowing off it. And what, just because it looks like that and you feel some sort of flavour of love that you're going to get on your knees and be grateful for that being in your presence? Because I've had plenty of those and they're as evil as evil can be. So we need to get real.
So I'm getting you to feel the energy. L look at the look on this being's face. Yeah? Just feel that energy. See that? Feel that energy. Now look at this one. It's different, isn't it? It's very different from this one and the ones before it, right? Feel that one. Look at the wisdom in that one. You can feel the energy. That's what I'm trying to say. You need to understand that there's, there's even reptilians that live inside the earth that have been part of the earth and what we are talking about from, you know, we're talking about hundreds of millions of years of evolution from the dinosaur age. What has become of those creatures? And those clans have split and there are those that detest humans and there are, there's a group of them that love humans. See? Look at this Nordic. Quite different, isn't it, to that Nordic energy, isn't it? See? Right. That being there, to me, is a natural Draco reptilian with great wisdom. That is a natural Nordic. I'm trying to help you to understand in the future if any of you are having experiences and what it is you're dealing with. Because what I haven't gotten into yet is about the two different expressions of light energy in the universe. So there's one light energy. Very natural, isn't it? Yeah? Now feel that one. That's a different energy. It's sharper, isn't it? It's got a harder edge to it. It's light and it's love, but there's a hard edge to it. You're the first group of people I've been able to do this exercise with. Yeah? This is, this is about discernment. I wish somebody did that to me because I had to find all this out the hard way. Yeah? And then I was scoundering through images to try and share what I've learnt with you guys. Just because something looks pretty doesn't mean it has your best interests at heart. Yeah?